All right, guys, welcome back to Strong Successful Male. So for today in the Ask SSM video series, I got a young guy, he's 21, and he want to know my opinion on what are some of the best things that he can do and young guys like him to start saving money, but not just saving money, but also beginning to build wealth at a very young age. Obviously, a lot of guys out there don't have a lot of information about that. They haven't had a lot of good role models teaching them. They don't know where to start. So he wants to know, what, obviously, what's the best way to go about this, the best to be the smartest financially. So I'm going to go through his email real quick, and I'm going to break this thing down on multiple fronts to really help him and anybody else that's in a situation like that out. So it starts off. He says, uh, hi, SSM. I hope you are well. I'm a 21-year-old from Belfast, Northern Ireland, and I really enjoy your videos as they provide good advice about life. Bro, I was in your country two months ago. I had a great time. I was in Ireland for about seven days, and I was in Northern Ireland for three days. I saw some cool things there. I had a really great time. Uh, My question for you is, what is the best way to save money for younger guys? I currently work full-time, but on weekends, I DJ for my side hustle, earning extra money. I don't want to just keep the money sitting there. What could I possibly do? Do something with it. All the best. So, bro, first of all, congratulations for being on your grind. You're working full time and you're DJing on the weekend. That's awesome. You're busting your ass. That's what you should be doing at 21 years old and in your 20s, guys. So good job for you. And obviously DJing is something you enjoy. So it's like you're, you're getting paid to have fun, which is cool. So, guys... Before I get into this, I'm going to do a little disclaimer. I am not a certified financial planner or anything like that. So everything I say here is pure entertainment. And on the basis of what I would do, knowing what I know and my experience, if I was a young guy out there. That being said, so I'm going to break this down into two different scenarios here, guys. I'm going to break this down in one scenario on the basis that young guys like him, 21, are living at home but making money from a full-time job, making money, making money from their job, and then guys that live on their own and have lots of expenses to pay and are working full-time and how to save money. So how guys save money when they're living with their family and have minimal expenses, and guys are living on their own with less money for uh, to, to invest and what to do there. So on the basis of if you are a young guy and you are working full-time or working and you're living at home with your parents because uh, they're very kind and letting, they're trying to help you get started in the world and you have minimal expenses like rent or electric or anything like that. On that basis, if you're a young guy and you're working and you don't have those expenses because you're living with your parents, first thing, thank your parents for allowing you to do that and do nice gestures on occasion like cook and grocery shop and clean. Now, if you're working and you don't have those expenses, the first thing I would do before even considering investing your money is to start doing some things to take care of any debts you may have. And the first debt you should get rid of, if you have it, is credit card debt. So you're a young guy and you have maybe one credit card or a couple credit cards and you have a revolving balance of some money on there, of things that you bought but haven't paid off yet, pay those off first. They charge you ridiculous fees for the uh, for borrowing money on the credit cards. American Express is making a lot of money off you. So pay those, use that money that you have coming in because you have, you're living at home and no major expenses to pay for. Pay off the credit cards first. That's the first thing you do. Get rid of the credit card debt. Then if you pay off the credit card debts and you're good to go there, or if, you, if you're living at home and you don't have credit card debt, the next debt you should pay off is a auto loan debt if you happen to have that, okay? Depending on how big it is, get rid of that, okay? Then it, once you pay that off, or if you don't have that, the next thing you should do is take a look and see if you have any student loan debts. If you if your parents, if you're young, like this young, and they're allowing you to live with them for a while, debt-free to help you get started in this world, if you have student loan debt that uh, is... You know, it's enough, but not too big, and you can either pay it off in a couple of years by literally busting your ass at your job and taking all the extra money and paying it off, or at least making a major debt in it, do that, okay? Either you can pay it all off, so then when you move out, you're, you're, that's it, no debts at all, or you make a significant dent in it that you can then have it that you can maybe negotiate to have a lower monthly fee because you've paid down the principal a lot, okay? Making a more uh, manageable debt. Once you've done that, then at that point, it's time to move the hell out. Okay, you can't be your own man if you're living with mom and dad forever. Now, before you move out, again, this is before you even start thinking about investing money and growing it, you take that money you have and you sit down with your parents and figure out what your monthly expenses are going to be when you move out. You know, what's it going to cost for rent, 
electric, cable, your auto insurance, your gas to get to your job, or, or your train pass because you take the train to the city, all your expenses, food, even fun. And whatever that monthly fee is, whatever that is, then I want you to spend time working and saving up for six months worth of living expenses. That way, and keeping it there, that's accessible, that it, way it's, it's there in case an emergency arises. You move out, you get your own place, either by yourself or with a roommate, and if you lose your job, you're cool because you have six months of living expenses and emergency fund to tap into. Therefore, you don't have to go move back home with mom and dad, which you don't want to do. Okay, and that way, then you have six months of living expenses. So that way, then you lose your job, you can find a new job in six months to, to match what you're making before. Okay, and if you couldn't, at least you can get a couple jobs to hold yourself over until then. People need to have an emergency fund, and a lot of people do not because shit happens in life. So you get that six month emergency fund. Then at that point, then move out. Okay, and then at that point, well, let me stop right there. Let's just say for argument's sake that you had no credit card debt, you had no auto loan debt, you had no student loan debt, and at that point then you're still living at home. Yeah, get the six months living expenses and then you can begin to invest, okay? When you're young, the younger you start investing, the longer you have to have that wealth build, okay? Now, right now, currently, in the marketplace, in all major markets around the world, has been 2022 has been a shit year. It's been a shit year because financial because uh, central banks, for instance, the United States, the Federal Reserve, is hell bent on breaking inflation by raising interest rates to slow the economy down. Financial markets hate interest rate hikes. That's why we've had all this turmoil and uncertainty driving markets down as well as the uncertainty from the war in Ukraine having an impact on energy prices. More people got to spend money on energy price, on, on gasoline and heating their homes. They got less money to spend on other things they enjoy, therefore having an impact on corporate earnings, etc., etc. as well as supply chain issues in China and all those other things causing uncertainty in the markets. Therefore, it's been a very shit year in the financial markets, a bear market, if you will. However, if you are an investor and you are have balls and you can think long term and understand how things work, it's a great opportunity to buy good companies on sale. There are a lot of phenomenal companies out there, the big bad boys that you all know of, Amazon, Google, Apple, Microsoft, Nike, Coke, McDonald's, Salesforce, NVIDIA, all these big boys. Some are tech companies, some are other type of companies that are significantly discounted, that are going to be around and that you can buy in cheap because uncertainty and looming recessions and interest rates will impact that type of thing amongst many other things. So it's an opportunity for young guys that have balls and that can think long term and a strong stomach to buy into either the company's stocks individually or they can buy into a fund like the S&P 500 that has all these types of companies and more at a significant discount and then hold on to long term because markets recover. Uh, recessions go into boom times and you'll be all right. So this is a great opportunity to do so. And now you can do that through, if your employer to this young guy or anybody else that's young and working, if your employer offers a 401k plan, they typically have it where if you invest a certain amount of money from your paycheck, they'll also match which part of what you invest, free money. You want to do that. And every month you put money in to these various funds that the 401k offers. If you don't have a 401k through your employer, you can open up, at least in the United States, because I don't know how things work in Northern Ireland, a retirement account of your own. A couple of good companies that host good retirement are Vanguard or Fidelity. I have both. They're great. And you can get yourself an, a Roth IRA, which means what money you can put only so much in per year. And what you put in per year, when you, you buy stocks and funds and all that, eventually when you sell, you don't have to pay taxes on that. But there's only so much you can put in per year. And you can then decide what you want to put into. A great fund, always for people, is the S&P 500. Okay? Very diversified. The top 10 holdings are the biggest, baddest companies, American companies in the world. Apple, Microsoft, Google, Amazon. You get the point. And you watch that fucker grow. But you think long term. Now, if you put in the money for the retirement account and you, and you can no longer put any more because there's a certain limit per year, at that point then you can buy through your own brokerage account through companies like Fidelity or Vanguard. There's more. 
You can then buy individual shares in different companies if you want, but there's risk there because you're putting a lot of eggs in one basket because you never know, a company could go out of business, but it's unlikely the biggest established blue chip companies will. And uh, or buy into funds just like the S&P 500 or other good index funds that are well diversified and just buy the shares cheap at a discount because we're in a bear market. Bear markets are great if you have a strong stomach and you can think long term and buy companies on sale. There's fantastic companies out there. They're 30, 40, 50 percent off from their all time highs because we have we are going into recession and the interest rate hikes and the uncertainty from the Federal Reserve has caused the price to decline. Okay, I don't think the declines are over yet, I might add. I think there's going to be a lot more turmoil going forward, but maybe I'm wrong and hopefully I am. But there's a lot of opportunity out there if you're smart and you have balls and you can think long term. I've been taking full advantage of this every month and I fully intend to. That's how, how I operate. So that's what a young guy can do and you think long term. You, you, you buy the ownership in the various uh, funds, index funds, or individual shares in good companies if you want Remind you again, invest in a way that you're comfortable with. Think long term, put it away. Don't worry about the prices. Don't don't sell at a loss or anything like that. And there you go. You'll build wealth over time. That's how you do it. Now, if you are living, if you're not living at home, and you are on on your own in your own apartment, and you're working, but you only have because you have to pay your rent and your electric and all those other bills, and you only have so much available. To, after all the expenses are paid, well, it's a little different. It's a little harder. In that case, I'd recommend the same thing. If you have any credit card debt, first get rid of all the credit card debt. Once you get rid of the credit card debt, if you have any, then get rid of the student loan debt. Uh, then get rid of the uh, auto loan debt if you have a car loan. If that's done, your student loan, depending on how big it is, that if you have a low interest rate loan, you might drag that out over a few years. And at that point, you can start investing as well in the same thing, like I said. But first, oh, I forgot to mention the emergency fund. Shit. If you're on your own and you're in an apartment living by yourself, after you paid off your credit card debt, and about, about the same time as you're paying credit card, also start saving an emergency fund if you don't have it. Ideally, you'd have three months no matter what to begin with, but ideally eventually six months, okay? And once all those things are done, as I told you about, then you can start investing. However, if you are, like you said, on your own and you... You're working and your employee does offer a 401k. Well, in that case, then take advantage of that every month with the 401k through your employer. And again, put it in well diversified index funds. And that's a good way to go while you're building up an emergency fund, while you're paying off the credit card debts. Because you want to, you certainly don't want to be investing money outside of, a, of a, what your employer would take out of your paycheck for the 401k when you're paying a ton of money and interest on credit card debts. And then going forward to both situations, to all guys out there, live beneath your means. If you make a certain amount per month, you don't want to be spending more than what you take in. You want to have a surplus every month and that way, that way, then if you invest, invest it. One of the best ways to save money is obviously if you have a roommate, okay, as opposed to living by yourself, that could save you a lot of money, which you can then invest early on. Also, Learn to freaking cook. People spend so much money on takeout or, and going out to eat and everything like that. Learn to cook. You got YouTube because you're obviously watching me. You can learn how to cook things on YouTube. You save a fortune and that extra money can then be used to pay off credit card debts, auto loan debts, build up an emergency fund, or invest outside of what your employer may be taking out of your paycheck. There you go. It's not that hard and it's fun. It's fun to build wealth and watch that thing grow. And the younger you are, the more you can watch it grow. But again, I do caution you if you want to buy shares in individual companies because although you can make a handsome return on the companies that obviously had a significant discount from their all-time high due to all the market volatility, you never know what could happen. So when you're investing in a very well-diversified index fund, you have the comfort of even if one of these companies goes out of business or some of them do, it's still balanced out by the other companies in there. That's how it operates. So there's always risk to everything, but there's also a lot of reward to everything too. You just got to have to weigh that out and find out what kind of risk you can handle. But the younger you are and the earlier you start investing, the more you can build wealth over time. And you're going to feel great about it as you do it, but you have to have balls. You have to take advantage of opportunity. Bear markets may be frustrating to people that invested earlier and have seen declines in their balances. Bugs everybody. But if you got cash coming in every month and you can think long term, it's a great opportunity to buy things because eventually markets will turn around and eventually those stocks will then go back to their, their highs after a while. Some may not, but you, that's a risk. 
especially with individual companies. So, <clears throat> clear my throat here. I hope that answered this young guy's question. Again, I don't know how things work in Northern Ireland in terms of investing and all that type of thing, but I think you get my point where I'm going here. And this definitely applies to any young guys out here in the United States. I'm definitely talking to you guys on how to do things. All guys should have money every month they can put away to either get rid of debt or to start building wealth through investing. That is the way to go. And it's fun. Really is enjoyable every month watching things grow over time. And you can do it. Don't piss away on bullshit. Don't piss away on jewelry, expensive watches, expensive cars, girls. Build that wealth young. So, hopefully that helps. All right, guys, that is it for today. Be sure to comment down below. Let me just think about this. If there's something I left out because I'm freestyling here, you never know. I may have left something out. Let, let's com comment, be hello, comment below and let this guy know, as well as any of the young guys, and they will certainly read it. I'd appreciate that. And be sure to like the video, share with your friends, and subscribe. And I'll catch you next time.